Good afternoon, my fellow listeners, my brothers and sisters. As soon as the signature tune is done, we will pray, then we begin whatever conversation that we need to have on this platform very shortly. So within the next 30 seconds, we're going to bring the curtains down and we start our discussion. Right. Good afternoon once again, my fellow listeners and my brothers and sisters. We thank you very much and it is so refreshing to come before you once again to meditate upon the ways of God Jehovah with you. And just as we do almost every Saturday, every Sunday, let us go down to God Jehovah in word of prayers before we begin our discussion. Our mighty King and our everlasting Father, we thank you this afternoon. We know very well this afternoon we are going to be at our back on call because we are mentioning your name. We are asking you, Lord, the broken and the contrite spirit for you to come to our aid so that all the things that are going to be done and said on this platform everything will be in harmony to your world in christ's name that we have prayed amen amen right my brothers and sisters when we began this conversation today is the sixth week or today the sixth part of the issue concerning baptism so this afternoon the center of attention is being directed towards the uh, baptism that took place within the life of Apostle Paul, within the life of Apostle Paul. Last week, when we came on this platform, we spoke extensively concerning, we spoke extensively concerning some of the components or some of the components of baptism. We were able to find out, we were able to find out that baptism has to be done under, under uh, one uh, authority that is under the name of the Father, the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit. That was we saw. And the element for baptism, we saw that one too is water. And that is it. Uh, the authority under which one has to be baptized has to be under the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The element has to be water. The method has to be immersion. The method has to be immersion. The purpose has to be uh, uh, salvation and the candidate for baptism is somebody or someone who has been taught 
someone who has been taught some of the basic principles concerning our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So my brothers, what we learned last week, what we learned last, last week, we were able to draw a conclusion that if that is the case, if that is the case, children, children, they are automatically eliminated from the discussion. So this afternoon, sorry, we're talking about baptism that took place in the life of Apostle Peter. We've had a look at what happened during the days of Paul. We've, we've seen so many things concerning the, uh, the, the, the jailer who, who imprisoned Paul and later on uh, his household, uh, they all got themselves baptized. We've seen all this and we saw some of the things concerning the baptism that took place in the life of Philip as well. We've seen all these things and we are going to have a look at baptism that took place within the lifetime of Apostle Peter. You see, the Bible tells us that after Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, the first Pentecost day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us the inhabitants of the nation of Israel, they all gathered within the city of Jerusalem. It was a festive occasion. That festive occasion was a festival of Pentecost. So they all gathered within the village square within the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit descended upon the 12 apostles like tongues of fire, like tongues of fire. So when all these things took place, the Bible tells us God through his miraculous ways spoke through Peter, was able to induce Peter for Peter to speak in an unknown thing, in an unknown language. That is basically what the Bible tells us. Because historically, when we go through the, the, the natives of the people who came to the city of Jerusalem, most of these people, more or less, we will say they were all, most of them were some of the Jewish people and some of them were also proselytes. If I say proselytes, we're talking about the converted Jews or the naturalized Jewish people. All these people came to witness the beauty of the culture of the nation of Israel. When they came, it was around this time, it was around this time that God Jehovah decided to descend the Holy Spirit upon his noble apostles. And upon further deliberations, the Bible tells us Peter was able to indoctrinate these people for them to come to the full realization that they killed Jesus Christ out of sheer ignorance. And for that reason, the Bible says, when they heard all this, they were pricked in their hearts. You see, they have done something that was not right. So they were asking for the antidote. They were asking for the cure. They were seeking for ways through which they will be able to rectify all the bad things they were seeking for ways to right all the wrongs that they have done. So upon further deliberations, let's listen to what the Bible actually says. I don't want to be sitting here misquoting the Bible, some of the things that the Bible has not said. We, the churches of Christ, on these social media handles, we keep on telling my listeners all the time that over here we speak where the Bible speaks and we are also silent where the Bible is also silent. So when Peter began to preach that famous sermon in Acts chapter 2, verse number 36 to verse number 38, let's listen to what actually happened in this particular place. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. The very person that you crucified, God Jehovah has made both Lord and Christ. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Brothers, what shall we do? Because they have heard an extraordinary message. They have heard something that is piercing through their hearts. So they became so disillusioned within their minds. They became so restless. And for that reason, they decided to master courage and ask Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what must we do? Now you have been able to tell us that we have done something that we shouldn't have done. There are so many infringements. We have done certain things 
that are serious violations in the sight of God Jehovah. So what must we do? There should be a way out. There should be something that we can do to rectify the situation. Let's listen to what Peter said. In verse number 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Two things, two things has to be deliberated upon on this very uh, passages that we have read. You see, when these people, when they came to the full realization that they have killed Jesus Christ out of sheer ignorance, based on the information inflicted upon their minds by Apostle Peter and the rest of the apostles, they said, Lord, brothers, what must we do? They were very, very afraid. And Peter said, there is only one way out and there is only one remedy. There is only one cure. There is only one way through which you will be able to right all the wrongs that you have done. And that is, first of all, repent of the sins that you have committed. Have it at the back of your minds. Admit your guilt wholeheartedly. And after that admission of guilt, there is another step that we have to take is to make yourself available. Baptism was recommended by Apostle Peter to all these people. And the Bible tells us within that very same day, we are going to read it very shortly. Within this very same day, baptism was administered onto about 3,000 people within that same day. So if somebody come and tell you that baptism is an unwholesome practice. Baptism does not save. Baptism hasn't, doesn't not, does not play any role in our future salvation. Then such a person, such a person is practicing what is abominable in the sight of God Jehovah himself. And we are going to read another Bible inscription. Baptism, the Bible is telling us Peter was able to tell these people, repent and be baptized. And once you get yourself baptism, there is another gift that God Jehovah is going to give to you. Upon all the sins that you have committed against him, upon all the wrong things that you have done, I'm asking you with a broken and a contrite spirit, repent, repent, repent of your sins and get yourself baptized. And after the baptism, you are going to give, get the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to dwell with you as a gift. The Holy Spirit is going to be planted within you. You see, that is basically what Peter was telling these people. But the bottom line is these days, when you go to some of our churches, some of the perimeters of our churches, you see certain people sitting in there. They claiming that they are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are speaking tongues. They've got a gift of second sight. They can see certain things. And these people, these people, they have not even received, they have not even received water baptism. And they are claiming that they are speaking in tongues. How and when were they managed to get all these things? Because over here, Peter is indoctrinating us for us to know that we can get the gift of the Holy Spirit through baptism. Holy Spirit will come and dwell within us only by means of baptism. So if you have not been baptized in water and we are claiming that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit or we have the indwelling Holy Spirit, then my brothers and sisters, then we have to bear in mind that we are doing certain things that are abominable, that are abominable in the sight of God, Jehovah himself. So we need to be very careful about the way and manner that we are capsizing, we are turning the Bible upside down. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, so when Peter said all this, let's continue to listen to what actually took place, what actually transpired in the city of Jerusalem during those days. When Peter said to these people, repent and be baptized, all of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, this very Jesus Christ whom you crucified, 
God has made both Lord and Christ. And when they heard all this, they were pricked in their heart. And Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord God will call. When other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. Those who accepted the message were baptized and about 3,000, 3,000 were added to their number that very day. 3,000 people were baptized on that very same day. So my brothers and sisters, the Bible is telling us that as soon as Peter preached that message, when Peter preached that on our Lord, read that message, all those who heard him, they decided to give themselves for Christ Jesus. They decided to give themselves for baptism. And for that reason, and for that reason, if somebody comes and tell you that baptism is of no use, baptism, there is no way that baptism is going to play any role in our future salvation, then the bottom line is we need to ask ourselves one important question. Why was Peter and the rest of the apostles wasting their energy and time baptizing uh, 3,000 people? So on average, on average, even if, even if, each of the apostles decided to baptize certain people. At least we can see over here that at least one of the apostles was baptized uh, baptized about 280 80 people on that day. So if they decided to do all these things within one day, why did they have to waste their time doing all these things? Why did they have to waste their energy knowing very well that the very thing that they are doing or the very thing that they were doing will not play any role or it's not going to yield any good dividend for them. My brothers and sisters, we need to be very careful. We need to be very careful about the way and manner that we do or we orchestrate certain things. On that same wavelength, when Apostle John, Apostle John was also writing to uh, one of uh, a, a lady who has to be a Christian, Apostle John also wrote uh, uh, concerning all this, and, and Paul warned this lady and her household when we read 2 John verse number 10. John said, if anyone comes to you and does not bring these teachings, do not take him into your house or welcome him. You see, this unadulterated message that we are preaching on this platform, the Bible is telling us, that if anybody comes into our mess, if anybody comes into our house and they decide to teach something contrary to what the Bible, what the Bible has enshrined for us, then at the end of the day, the Bible is telling us that such people, such people, we should not be seen to be welcoming them into our place of abode. So my brothers and sisters, baptism, baptism, it plays a very important role within our Christian salvation. So if you are claiming these days that you are Christian and you are not getting yourself baptized in water, water baptism, it is very, very essential for our salvation. That is the reason why certain people, they get uh, children baptized right from the very beginning of, of their infancy. And whilst they are doing all this and they think that is going to cement the bond of affection that these children have, with the supreme being himself. But that is not what the Bible talks about. The Bible says all those who are going to be baptized, they have to be some people who have been taught, people who have been indoctrinated for them to come to the full realization that Jesus Christ came to die for them. It has to be people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal savior. So children, 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 how would they be able to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal savior? You see, that is the reason why Jesus Christ, when he came, one of his ministerial duties, when at some point in time, children were being brought under his feet for him to bless them. Remember, the apostles decided to block their path. And Jesus Christ said, 
do not stop these little children for them to come to me. The cause for such is the kingdom of God. Children are blameless, children are innocent, not until they reach the age of accountability. If a child dies today, that child is going to grow and rest in the bosom of Abraham. So my brothers and sisters, all these things that we are talking about here this afternoon, it's not because we do not have anything better to do with our time, but there isn't anything better than what we are doing on this social media platform. So my brothers and sisters, let us be very careful the way that sometimes certain people capsize and twist the Bible to suit their own selfish means. So this afternoon, all that I'm trying to tell you this afternoon is, baptism, it plays a very important role in our Christian journey. Baptism plays a very, very important role in our future salvation. And just as I said, if that is not the case, if it is not the reason why that God Jehovah has orchestrated all those things, then how on earth, why did Peter and the rest of the apostles had to recommend baptism for the 3,000 souls within the city of Jerusalem during the days of Pentecost, during the first, first uh, Pentecost day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Another point that I would like to indoctrinate you this afternoon is the incident that took place within uh, the household of Cornelius, within the house of Cornelius, right? Cornelius, Cornelius, as we all know, or to those of us who do not know, Cornelius, he was an army commander. Cornelius was an army commander, and the Bible says he was an upright person. Cornelius, he was an upright person. He was giving arms to people. He was doing so many things. And above all, above all, the Bible says this man, he was praying three times in a day. Three times in a day all the things that he was doing. You see, the prayers that was being said by this man, it was able to be ascended into the heavenly throne room. And God Jehovah, he saw through the hearts of men and he found out that Cornelius, Cornelius was an upright person. But there was something, there was something that was missing. There was a missing ingredient within his life, which of course can help him for him to get his future salvation. And that missing ingredient was baptism. That missing ingredient was baptism. So upon further deliberation, God, Jehovah, when you get time, read the whole passage of Acts chapter 10. And the Bible tells us, God, Jehovah, he called Peter from jo the city of Joppa for him to go to the household of Cornelius, for him to go and talk to Cornelius concerning all these things that we are talking about. So let's read something from Acts chapter 10, verse number 44, to verse number 48. Four verses. Let's listen to what the Bible actually says. And the Bible says, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on, or who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. My brothers and sisters, you see what is happening over here. This is a clear manifestation of a prophecy that was prophesied by prophet Joel, that there is going to be a time that God is going to pour out his Holy Spirit upon all flesh. If the Bible says all flesh, it means both Jews and Gentiles. You see, the Jewish people, they inherited the Holy Spirit during Acts chapter two, the 12 apostles, they were all Jews. Jesus Christ gave them the Holy Spirit direct during that time. And subsequently, after that time, anybody who is going to receive the Holy Spirit, you get that one through means of baptism. You get the indwelling Holy Spirit through baptism. 
And what is happening over here in the household of Cornelius, what is being manifested within the household of Cornelius over here is telling us that Gentiles, because when Joel was prophesying, Joel said all flesh. The all flesh, just as I've lamented earlier on, it talks about both Jews and Gentiles. So when Peter went to the household of Cornelius, Cornelius, he was a Gentile. He wasn't a Jewish man, but he received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as well. He began to speak in tongues those days, even though, even though he had not yet received water baptism. That is the reason why it happened that way. So Cornelius and his household, after receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit for them to speak in tongues, baptism, water baptism was recommended by Peter unto the household of Cornelius and all those people who, who were around. So the Bible is telling us over here, my brothers and sisters, and all those who are listening to me this afternoon, that in order for our feet to be set on, on the path of knowledge, and in order for our feet to be set on the path of righteousness, let us do what is right. Let us make sure we, we, we indoctrinate ourselves. We go to the Bible and make sure that what the Bible actually says, we make sure that we do all those things in accordance with the will of the Bible. And whilst we are doing all these things, whilst we are meditating upon all these things, I know very well it is going to help us. So over here, Apostle Peter was able to tell the people in, 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 uh, in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2, they got themselves baptized, and Peter and the rest of the apostles, they laid their hands on them, and they got the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the household of Cornelius, Cornelius, it was a prophecy that was prophesied by Joel. That is the reason why they inherit, they got the, the, the Holy Spirit first before water baptism was administered unto them. So in a nutshell, all that we are trying to say this afternoon to my hearers or to my brothers and sisters is baptism, it is very, very important. Baptism, it is very, very essential in our Christian salvation. So if you allow anybody, if you allow anybody to come and, 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 and persuade you or to sway you away from dishonored or traded messages that we are preaching, then my brothers and sisters, if you are not very careful, you are going to be seen to be doing certain things that are abominable in the sight of God, Jehovah himself. Lord willing, next week, when we come back again, when we come back again, we are going to have certain things. We're going to look at certain things. What Peter said concerning what took place during the days of Noah. During the days of Noah, certain things took place. God, the Bible tells us that Noah and his household, God Jehovah asked them to build an ark. And it lasted 120 years whilst they were building the ark. And the Bible tells us God's patient waited, God waited patiently during those days when Noah was building the ark. And after finishing building, eight souls, eight souls were saved within the flood. What actually happened? Why did God, Jehovah, decided to do all those things? We are going to go to the Bible, Lord willing, next week, Saturday. And we are going to indoctrinate ourselves. We are going to find out very important descriptions in the Bible during, at, at that particular time. And I know very well that we will be able to see so many good things. So my brothers and sisters, all that I'm trying to tell you this afternoon, all that I came to tell you this afternoon is, if you have not given yourself to Christ in baptism, please do so. And if you do that, it is going to help you. This is broadcast from Mitcham Church of Christ. We meet, we meet at South Mitcham Community Center. South Mitcham Community Center. The postcode is CR43PR, Charlie Romeo 4, 3, Papa Romeo. Tomorrow, Lord willing, we are having a very special service over there. Everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Or better still, if you want to talk to me personally on the phone, my phone number is 073 Zero seven three nine nine five eight three three five nine. When you give me a call, I'll be able to tell you and give you the directions 
nine o'clock sharp, we are going to be there and it's going to be a very important spiritual exercise. Thank you very much and may God bless you all. My time is up and just as we began with a word of prayer, we are going to bring the curtains down by means of prayers as well. Let us pray. We thank you, our God in heaven, for helping us, for us to bring this unadulterated word into the minds of your children. Please help us for this seed to be germinated. And if it germinates, I know very well it is going to yield good dividends. We thank you for helping us and listening to our common supplications. In Christ's name that we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We thank God, Jehovah, very much. And my uh, two listeners who took part, Mr. Rofi and Frank Dukun, God, Jehovah, should continue to bless you immensely. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.